Hey, my name is Justin Kabelka, and today we're going to talk about how we made an emoji ball python. So for my regular viewers of this channel, you're very familiar with how we do this. But this video is for those of you who are seeing this for the very first time. Maybe a news article brought you to this. It's been in the news lately. And wanted to explain a little bit about how this works and how we got such an incredible pattern on a ball python. So first of all, you start with a ball python. The ball python is a West African python species. It's the most common python that's kept as a pet. And it is an excellent species. It only gets to be about five feet long and about 10 to 15 pounds. So very small compared to what most people think of when they think of a python. The cool thing about ball pythons is in the wild, they are very polymorphic, which means that over the, the course of the last few decades, we have found quite a few in the wild that look different for one race or another, just natural selection, mutations occur, and we are able to find those animals in the wild and bring them into captivity and reproduce that unique look that actually happened naturally. Through this process, we're able to actually create snakes by combining these different natural mutations. We're able to create snakes that would never occur in the wild because they would be unable to find each other um, because of the randomness of natural selection. So on the emoji snake itself, it is a dreamsicle ball python. A dreamsicle is a combination of a piebald gene, which is a recessive mutation, and a lavender albino, which is also another recessive mutation. So it's about an eight year process from scratch if you were to get a piebald and a lavender and breathe them together and work your way into making a dream sickle. But the emoji part of the snake is actually not part of the process that I control. It's a random part of the piebald gene. And we're gonna explain a little bit about how that happens randomly and how it's so special when you're able to get two or even three of them on a single snake. A piebald ball python has parts of its body that are white, they're incapable of holding pigment. And so it's kind of a random pattern. You don't know how much pattern it might have, but they have what we call our saddles, which are these spots where the pigment is saddled in the back of the snake. And you see here, it has two lines right on either side of the back of the snake here. And sometimes though, randomly, one of the lines will have a break in it. This example right here is another example of a saddle with two lines. But look at this one, this one where one of the lines had a break and it creates two eyes and then a mouth shape. And so we have a great little face in the saddle of the python. And again, this is random just to get that happen to get that little pattern on one side, which creates the face, but it's a really, really neat occurrence when it happens. And sometimes you get very lucky and get multiple times on the same snake. This is a desert ghost pied. What's amazing about this, it is just absolutely full of little faces in the pattern. So we have like the perfect kind of jack-o'-lantern face there. Then we have this one vertical face, which you don't see very often, a vertical face in the pattern. And then we have a third one right there. And what I love about these is they can be smiling, or if you turn them the other way, they can be frowning. So it's kind of a cool thing. But the possibly awesome thing that Pied brings in is that I would say maybe one out of every five to 10 Pieds have some sort of face in the pattern like that. And it's really special when you get an animal that has you know, two or three in there. Really, really cool. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm Justin Kabelka and I hope you learned a little bit about ball pythons in this video, whether you're a hobbyist already or you're learning about them for the first time. I hope you get to enjoy this new world of living art and learn more about it. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.